Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the University of Washington's 142nd Commencement Ceremony, honoring the graduating class of 2017. Awards of Excellence. Stadium are candidates for the various doctoral and professional degrees. Carrying the gonfalons for the graduate school are Florentina Devi Constantine on the north and Nai Ching Chi on the south. Ms. Devi Constantine is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in French Studies. Ms. Chi is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Behavioral Nursing and Health Informatics. On the north, carrying the gonfalons for the School of Pharmacy is Anastasia Marie Beatty. Ms. Beatty is receiving a Doctor of Pharmacy degree. On the south, carrying the gonfalon for the School of Law is Olga Barejas. Ms. Barejas is receiving a Juris Doctor degree. Candidates for various master's degrees are now entering the stadium. Carrying the gonfalons for the graduate school are Joseph Frederick Blake Jr. on the north and Andy Herman on the south. Mr. Blake is receiving a Master of Fine Arts in Dance. Mr. Herman is receiving a Master of Science in Information Management. Also on the north, carrying the gonfalon for the Evans School of Public Policy and Government are Viviana Yolanda Garza and Jacqueline Ellen Wu. 
Each of them is receiving a Master of Public Administration. Also on the south, carrying the gonfalon for the School of Dentistry, are gonfaloniers Diane Marie Daubert and Alan Yassin. Ms. Daubert is graduating with a Doctor of Philosophy in Oral Biology. Mr. Yassin is receiving a Master of Science in Dentistry and Periodontics. Ladies and gentlemen, candidates for the bachelor's degrees from the College of Arts and Sciences are now entering the stadium. Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Fine Arts, and Bachelor of Music candidates are on the north. Bachelor of Science and Biology candidates are also on the north. All other bachelor candidates enter on the south. On the north, carrying the gonfalon for the College of Arts and Sciences is Addison Elizabeth Francis, who is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Music Vocal Performance and a Bachelor of Science in Communication Disorders. Candidates receiving Bachelor of Science degrees are now entering from the south, led by gonfalonier Dorothy Cambuya who is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Neurobiology. South, carrying the gonfalon for the College of Arts and Sciences, is a chumbum Jude Tunyi, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry. Candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences continue to enter on the north and the south. 
Carrying the gonfalon on the north is Jenny Sayuri Masuoka, who is receiving a Bachelor of Fine Arts and a Bachelor of Arts American Indian Studies. Ladies and gentlemen, on the south side of the stadium, please welcome bachelor's candidates from the College of Education, led by gonflaneer Sarah Amber Evans and Tim Zeng. Ms. Evans is receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Learning Sciences. Mr. Zeng is graduating with a Doctor of Philosophy in Special Education. Bachelor of Science in Aeronautics and Astronautics. Ms. Gunnarsson is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Bioengineering. Candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences continue to enter from the north, led by gonflaneer Veronica Paulina Cedillo Hernandez, who is receiving a Bachelor of Arts in English, Creative Writing, and Bachelor of Arts in Drama.
bachelor's candidates from the College of the Environment. Carrying the gonfalon is Robert James Swan, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science and Resource Management. Bachelor candidates from the Information School are now entering the stadium on the south. The Information School gonfalon is carried by gonfaloniers Brittany K. Yen Hoy and Jonathan Palone Lee. Each of them is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Informatics. Bachelor candidates from the Michael G. Foster School of Business are now entering the stadium on the south, led by gonflaneers Jamie Lightsky and Odin Atkinson. Each is receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration. Candidates receiving Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees from the College of Arts and Sciences are now entering from the north, led by gonflaneer Abby Lynn Hansen, who is receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Disability Services.
graduates from the School of Nursing and the School of Medicine are now entering the stadium on the south. The School of Nursing is led by Gon Fernier, Michelle Puey Yon Yip, who is receiving a Director of Philosophy in Nursing Science. Carrying the Gon Flan for the School of Medicine is Allison Pringle. Ms. Pringle is receiving a Doctor of Physical Therapy. Bachelor candidates from the College of Built Environments. They're led by Gon Flanier Oren Keith, who's receiving a Master of Architecture. Ladies and gentlemen, the final groups of bachelor candidates entering the stadium on the south are from the School of Public Health and the School of Social Work. Carrying the gonfalon for the School of Public Health is Win Kim Wen, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Public Health. The School of Social Work candidates are led by gonflanier Justine Gail Cruz Roberson, who is receiving a Master of Social Work.
Please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the members of the deans and presidents' parties are about to enter the stadium. Will all graduates please take their seats? Turn your attention to the southwest corner of the stadium and welcome the procession of the deans of the university's 16 schools and colleges. Academic procession concludes with the entrance to the stadium of the University of Washington's Regents, President and Vice Presidents, 
led by the University Marshall Associate Professor Joseph James of the Information School. Will all graduates please remain standing at your seats? The commencement exercises of the University of Washington will be opened with the presentation of the colors by the joint ROTC Color Guard and the singing of the Star Spangled Banner by Yu Jung Cho. Ms. Cho is graduating today with two Bachelor of Arts degrees, one in vocal performance and one in Italian studies. The audience will please rise.
Please be seated. It is now my great pleasure to present to you the President of the University of Washington, Anamari Kausei, who will preside over today's exercises. Welcome to the 142nd commencement ceremony of the University of Washington. <laughs> commencement ceremonies are an expression of academic traditions going back hundreds of years, and they symbolize some of the most important values of our civilization. The pursuit of truth, the preservation of freedom, and the cultivation of a climate of civility. These ceremonies are also festive, celebrating, as the name suggests, not the end, but the commencement of new activities and challenges in the lives of our graduates. Just a few years ago, it seems, we welcomed you at the university freshman convocation in front of the same four columns that you see standing behind me. All that remains of the original university that opened in 1861. At that convocation, we told you we would see you in front of these same columns when you graduated. Today, that may seem like a lifetime ago, or maybe it seems like yesterday, maybe a little bit of both. But here you are. You made it. And I'm truly honored to be the first to formally congratulate the degree and award recipients, recipients and to welcome you all to this ceremony. The splendid music you've been listening to during the processional, and which you'll be hearing a little bit more later, is being provided to us this afternoon by students from the School of Music's Wind Ensemble under the director, directorship of Professor Timothy Salzman. As you can tell, they're gifted musicians, and we greatly appreciate their participation here today. The ultimate responsibility for the university lies with the members of the Board of Regents. 10 citizens of the state who are appointed by the governor and confirmed by the state senate. These dedicated men and women devote many hours each year to the welfare of the university. Nine of our regents are here this afternoon, and I would like to introduce them at this time. Please hold your applause until they're all introduced. Patrick M. Shanahan, the chair of the board. Jeremy Jake, board vice chair. William S. Ayer, Christiane Blake, Joanne Harrell, Constance W. Rice, Rogelio Riojas, Herb Simon, and the student member of the board, Austin Wright Pettibone. Please recognize our Board of Regents. In addition to the Regents, we have sitting, seated on this platform this afternoon the chief academic and administrative officers of the university, the vice presidents, the deans of the schools and colleges who will be introduced shortly, faculty members, professors emeriti, the elected student leadership, whom you'll hear from a little bit more later, and other representatives from the various schools, colleges, and departments of the university. We also have with us the chair of the Faculty Senate, Zoe Barnes, who represents one of the greatest faculties on the planet, and I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm also very pleased to introduce Clyde D. Walker, the president of our Alumni Association, which has been keeping the over 400,000 members of the Husky alumni family connected with each other and with the university for more than 125 years. I would, come on, give our Husky alumni. I also want to recognize the many members of the faculty serving today as commencement marshals, 
as well as our 2017 award winners. The names of these outstanding members of the university community are listed in your commencement program. Finally, of great importance today are all the family members and supporters who have been so instrumental in, he in helping each of our graduates achieve the tremendous distinction that they'll be awarded today. I would like mothers to rise, fathers, family members, supporters. Thank you. And now, to the class of 2017, congratulations. Now, maybe not everybody is willing to admit it, but each one of you has worked hard for this wonderful achievement. There are days when the obstacles may have seemed insurmountable, when you questioned yourself about, could you do this? Would you be here today? Today you have that answer. You could, you have. So today's a day to celebrate. And there'll be many more celebrations to follow in your lives. But at this moment of great achievement, I'm going to ask you to do something that's a little counterintuitive. I want you to take a second and think back on a really tough time that you had here. Think about a really tough time. Maybe a disappointing grade. Some of you may have had to take some time off to help a family member because of an illness. Maybe you didn't get into your first choice major. But in short, think about a moment when by your own standards, you experienced failure. Now look around you. Look at where you are. To sit here today, you had to overcome that failure. You lived through it. You learned something from it. In some way, however obscure, it may not be obvious to you right now, that failure is part of your journey. It's part of what got you here to this moment. And I'm asking you to think about it and to hold that knowledge close because I know from personal experience that you will need to think about it and to draw strength from it someday. When you face setbacks, remember, you have what it takes to persevere, to learn, and to keep moving forward. And you, all of you out there, you are really going to move forward. Each of you has earned a degree that's a passport to an infinite world of possibilities. Your diploma represents so much. It's hard to believe it's just a piece of paper. But that paper says that you're intellectually curious. It says you know how to work hard and that you see things through. It says you know how to devote yourself to something larger than yourself. That you can learn what others have to teach you and that you can transform that learning in ways that add to our collective knowledge and understanding. And the world urgently needs that kind of learning, that curiosity, the drive that you cultivated in your time here. You enter the world at a moment of upheaval, of rapid change, a time of polarization, a time of great challenges. And that world is counting on your intellect, your compassion, and your optimism. Every single one of you is leaving here with a privilege. And I challenge you to use that privilege to make a difference for good in the world. Your education and the university that stands behind it will open doors that might otherwise have remained closed. And please hold that door open for others. You've learned how to reason and how to argue reasonably. 
I hope you'll use those skills to maintain dialogues, and better yet, to start them. You leave here part of a community, a member of the University of Washington alumni. Make the most of that community, and remember that your fellow Huskies and your university is here for you. And finally, leave here with values, some that I know we share as a community, and others that are deeply personal to each one of you. As you go through life, if you look for them, you'll find opportunities to live your values and to truly benefit the world and all those who share it with us. Take those opportunities. As a public university, the University of Washington has a special obligation to give back to the public here in Washington State, but well beyond it. You have an opportunity to honor that public promise in whatever way is meaningful to you. I know from the impressive contributions that you've already made that you'll give back in ways that we can't even imagine yet. So speaking for the University of Washington, I want to close by saying thank you. Thank you for your brilliant work your generous service, for making it through, for making it over or around all the setbacks that were in your way, for making it to this day, to this place, to this momentous achievement. Congratulations, class of 2017. And now, I'd like to ask Switch Sen Ellen Chow and Josephine Strauss to present the class gift. Switch Sen is receiving the Bachelor of Science in Public Health, and Josephine is graduating today with two Bachelors of Arts degree, one in Environmental Studies and one in History. Switch Sen and Josephine co-chaired the Senior Class Gift Council, and thanks to their leadership, the senior class has made this wonderful early start in philanthropy. So what? Good afternoon. The senior class gift leadership team and I worked with an outstanding volunteer group to organize this campaign. It was important to choose a gift that represented the values of our class and would enhance the university for future Huskies. Therefore, with innovation and progress in mind, we decided to create the Class of 2017 Sustainable Legacy Fund. This fund will sponsor installations of renewable technology on campus and provide scholarships to students wishing to pursue renewable technology, research, and development. It is with great pleasure that I announce on the Seattle campus alone, we raised $54,572. As you leave this school, we encourage you to continue to donate and keep our legacy alive for generations to come. We are thankful for all the individuals that made a contribution to our gift, and would like to recognize everyone wearing a purple ribbon on their gown. And now, President Kalse will present you with the names of all the donors. On behalf of a very grateful university and future generations of students, I accept this generous gift from the class of 2017. Now all of you have a share in the university's futures. Since 1932, the university has presented medals to the graduating seniors with the most distinguished academic records at the university. One medal is awarded to the student who's completed at least three-fourths of his or her degree requirements at the university. And one is awarded to a student who entered the university with at least 60 transfer credits from a Washington community college. The first recipient of this year's President's Medal is Selena Eva Gunnarsson. Selena, will you come forward?
Selena was drawn to the field of bioengineering after taking an introductory seminar in that subject. She's conducted research at Sweden's famous Karolinska Institute and will, we, and will be working full-time this summer as a research scientist at the Center for Infectious Disease Research. Over the course of her outstanding graduate career, she studied abroad in Rome and worked with bioengineering faculty in developing a diversity-based ethics curriculum that has already been incorporated into the introductory bioengineering seminar. Selena is graduating summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in bioengineering. Selena, it's my greatest pleasure to present you with this medal in recognition of your achievements. Thank you. Congratulations. The recipient of the President's Medal for the student who entered the university from a community college is Narmina Sharafova. <laughs> Narmina immigrated with her family from Azerbaijan and entered the university from Bellevue College. She pursued her passion to study law through the Law, Societies, and Justice program. She completed a four-month internship with the Seattle Municipal Court, helping clients of the court find food, shelter, and clothing. And she's consistently volunteered her time to provide services to disadvantaged students and to immigrants. And we get to keep her. She will enter the UW School of Law this fall. <laughs> Narmina graduated summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts in Law, Societies, and Justice. It's my great pleasure to present you this medal for your outstanding achievement. I would also like to recognize those students who are graduating today with the university's highest honor, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude. Their names are listed on page 15 of the commencement program. Since 1938, the University and the Alumni Association have presented an award to a former University of Washington student whose work has attained national or international prominence. The Alumna Summa Laude Dignatus Award, which means alumnus worthy of the highest praise is the highest honor bestowed by the university on one of its graduates. And today we add to the long and distinguished list of individuals who've received this award the name of Norman B. Rice, two-time mayor of Seattle and a man whose service to the Seattle community for over five decades has been proudly beneficial, has had a great impact. Would Mr. Rice please join me at the lectern? Mr. Rice earned both a bachelor's degree in communications and a master's degree in public administration, which makes him a double dog. <laughs> He's a, he was elected to the Seattle City Council in 1978 and served there for 11 years, sponsoring programs to reduce crime, fight drug use, provide energy assistance to low-income families, and promote diversity and human rights. He was the first African-American mayor of Seattle in 1889 and was re-elected in 1993. 1889. 1889. 1989. Oh. What can I say? It's windy in the... You've been around for a long time. You don't look, you don't look at all like it was 1898. As mayor, he revitalized Seattle's downtown core gave Seattle residents a strong voice in decisions affecting their neighborhoods, strengthened the public schools, championed crime prevention, and worked to address the growing number of homeless residents. During his tenure, Seattle was named the best U.S. city for business by Fortune magazine and the second most livable city. And I might add, as mayor in 1991, he was our commencement speaker. 
Mr. Rice went on to serve as CEO of the Federal Home Loan Bank of Seattle and later as CEO of the Seattle Foundation, where he raised more than $25 million for King County nonprofits. He promoted education and expanded economic opportunity. And here at the University of Washington, he oversees the Evans School Civic Engagement for the 21st Century Project. I think there's some Evans School graduates out there. For his distinguished career as a public servant and all that he's contributed to the well-being of our city and its residents, his alma mater, with great pride and admiration, we honor Norman B. Rice as the 2017 Alumna Summa Laude Dignitas. Now I can take it home. Okay, now you can take it home, right. And we can get it over there. All right. Hey, congratulations. Student government is an important component of the governance of this institution, and its leadership is called on regularly to represent student views on a wide range of issues at the university. I'm pleased to introduce you now to the president of the Associated Students of the University of Washington, Danielle Menez, and president of the Graduate and Professional Student Senate, So Yin Eloise Kim. Thank you, Anamari. Class of 2017, congratulations. My name is Danielle Mempin Menez, and I've had the honor of serving you this past year as your undergraduate student body president. Nine months ago, you welcomed me and you joined me in welcoming 6,000 freshmen to the University of Washington at Freshman Convocation. When I sat down to write that speech, the words flowed easily. But when I sat down to write this one, my brain was blank. It's much easier to give comforting words of advice and guidance looking back than it is looking forward. How could I attempt to do that when I, even in this moment, feel just as unsure and uncertain as I did when I was a freshman? It was simple. It turns out that I didn't need to Google inspiring commencement speeches 2017 to find the right words. All I had to do, and all we have to do moving forward, is to look to the communities that have shaped us for the past few years, this community. When we began our journey at the University of Washington, we were uncertain. Uncertain about our academic paths, professional careers, and personal passions. As we sought to find our purpose, as they say, we were worried that we wouldn't find that one thing, that one passion, project, or experience that would change ourselves and our lives. As many of us now know, there is no one thing. Instead, there are a bunch of things that add up and have added up these past few years to shape us and our experience. But as we depart from this place, we remain uncertain as we seek to find our next thing. The truth is, I don't think that uncertainty will ever go away. But we should find comfort in it, thrive in it, and use it to fuel our path towards meaningful change and equitable impact, just like we've already done here. Throughout our time at this institution, the transformative power of the University of Washington community has revealed to each of us that what we care about can truly change the world. All we need to do is to start with the things we hold dear, our ideas and ideals, our hopes and dreams. In closing, I leave you with some of the first words that we heard when we arrived at this place. Because now, as we depart, these words ring truer than ever. What defines students at the University of Washington? It is our belief in possibility and our unshakable optimism. It's a hunger that pushes us to tackle challenges and pursue progress. It's the conviction that together, we can create a world of good. And above all, we are determined to be boundless. Class of 2017, here is where we have changed the world. And as we graduate today, out there is where what we care about will continue to do so. Thank you to the University of Washington for electing me. Thank you to my incredible family, my mom, 
my dad and my sister, my extended family, you were the reason why I'm here. Mahal na mahal ko kayo. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. UDAP, Huskies. My heart is filled with special feelings when I hear these words. UDAP has integrated into my life after spending years here as a graduate student. And now it is an inseparable part of who I am. I hope you, who are about to bid a farewell to UDAP as masters and doctors, feel the same pride and affection. This institution gives us more than a degree. Our knowledge has grown taller, our perspective wider, our understanding deeper, and our heart for the community has gotten bigger. This institution nurtures and transforms us. Though you are living, you know that your education does not end here. UDA provides us with a foundation our continual learning can build upon. I'm not saying this because my every moment at UDA has been sweet. A graduate school is hard. It is really, really hard. As a woman of color and as an international student, I have faced additional challenges. And I know that those challenges will continue when I go outside UDA. But now, like you, with the help of my education here, I know better how to make an impact and how to create positive changes. I look forward to amazing transformation you will make where you go and with people you meet. I know you can do so many great things with an effort and persistence you put into completing your degree. I salute PhD students, especially you look so amazing in that purple gown. Congratulations for concluding your long journey. I have best wishes for you that your years of study will reward you properly. Congratulations, everyone, and see you somewhere as Huskies. Thank you. Is that a dynamic duo? Now, today we're honored to have as our commencement speaker, Dr. Janetta Betch Cole, former president of Spelman College and Bennett College, and for decades, a leader in the cause of racial and gender equality. In recognition of her extraordinary achievements, the university is today conferring upon her the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. The honorary degree citation will be read by Regent Patrick Shanahan. Would Dr. Cole and Mr. Shanahan please come to the lectern? Shall we? Janetta Betch Cole. Scholar, educator, and humanitarian. For over a half century, you have taken up the cause of racial and gender equality for countless young women and men, and led them to a future they might otherwise never have known, one filled with promise and purpose. The hateful messages of the racially segregated South, where you grew up, only strengthened your resolve to rise above. After completing your undergraduate studies at Oberlin College, you earned master's and PhD degrees in anthropology from Northwestern University. A series of historic achievements followed. You were a pioneer in the establishment of black studies programs in the United States, and you were the first African-American woman to serve as president of Spelman College a historically black college for women. <laughs> Under your leadership, Spelman was named the top liberal arts college in the South. 
You returned to teaching in 1998 as a professor of anthropology, women's studies, and African-American studies at Emory University in Atlanta. And in 2002, you were selected as the president of Bennett College. For the past eight years, you have served as the director of the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art. In your roles, in the streets, in the halls of academia and in the corporate boardrooms, you have written and spoken forcefully and persuasively about discrimination, inequality, and social justice. Moreover, you have dedicated yourself to ensuring that others can walk through the doors you have opened. From your fire, they have lifted an ember to light their own fires. Your warmth and courage will carry them and those who follow them far into the future. For your groundbreaking career and service as a teacher, scholar, university president, and a leader of one of the nation's landmark national art museums, for your wisdom and generosity, and for reaching out to take the hand of those behind you and lead them forward, the University of Washington is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Afternoon. Now, where I grew up in the southern part of this great country, we would call this a great getting up afternoon. And that is because we are here to celebrate. We are here to celebrate each of the graduates in my class of 2017. So my fellow graduates, you stayed the course, you did the work, and now comes the reward of receiving a degree from the University of Washington. I turn now to greet the sister president, Anna Marie Corse. I acknowledge the regents, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends of this great public research university. A special greeting from the bottom of my heart to the families of today's graduates. You have stood by these women and men. You had believed in them when they weren't sometimes sure they believed in themselves. And some of you have been a human ATM <laughs> for your daughter, your son, your grandchild, your niece, nephew, spouse, or partner, or other kin. So, dear graduates, it won't be long now before you leave. But before you go, here is what I ask of you. Only three things. First, that you take care of yourselves. Secondly, 
that you take care of others. And thirdly, that you take special care to respect and celebrate the beauty and strength in human diversity that is found all over our country and our world. Now, when I ask you to take care of yourself, it is not a call for you to become egocentric, that is to only think of yourself or to become self-centered. But I am calling on you to take care of your minds, your bodies, and yes, your souls. You graduate today because you've completed different courses of study. And whether you go on to more formal education or not, I urge you to never stop learning. That is how you really take care of your mind. Indeed, when you have no more questions, when you're no longer curious about countless matters, then the best part of living is done. Albert Einstein once said, I have no special talent. I am only passionately curious. You, dear classmates, are living at a time when advances in medical science, combined with your own careful attention to healthy living, can lead to a very long life. And just as you need to take care of your physical selves, I must also urge you to take care of your souls. Now, one of the ways you can surely do that is to fall in love or continue to be in love with the arts. Music, dance, theater, the visual arts can help us to understand others and ourselves. Now, I know you can live without the arts, but you will not live well without them. Secondly, dear graduates, I urge you to not only take care of yourselves, you must take care of others. Now, where I grew up, these are the words that captured that responsibility. Listen, doing for others is just the rent you got to pay for your room on earth. Elie Wiesel, who survived the Holocaust to become a global human rights activist, he said this, our lives do not belong to us alone. Our lives belong to those who need us the most. And one of my sheroes, Remember now, for every hero in the world, there is at least one shero. One of my sheroes, the African-American educator, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, said each of us should go on and climb, go to the top. But, she said, you must lift others as you climb. Whatever is your chosen profession, please find the time to be of service to others. It may be serving as a big brother or big sister to that youngster who desperately needs you. Or you may volunteer in a soup kitchen or provide pro bono legal services 
or bring comfort to women who are in a shelter to escape from domestic violence. Our country and our world are calling on you, my classmates, to respond positively to these words of Dr. Martin Luther King. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And finally, dear graduates, I ask this of you. Please continue to prepare yourselves to live in our highly diverse country and world. Now, I am aware that in 2015, the sister president of this great university launched a race and equity initiative with a challenge that University of Washington students, faculty, staff, take personal responsibility for addressing their own biases and improving this university's culture. This means that you have a head start on graduates in many other institutions who've not been engaged and challenged with such an initiative. Now, as you surely know, we are living in a peculiar, a particular period in our country and our world, where there is simultaneously more awareness of how diverse we human beings are, and there is a resurgence of hateful rhetoric and violent actions against this diversity. Here then are words that call on you and that call on me, words that call on all, on every single one of us in the world to acknowledge, respect, and celebrate human diversity. There is a Chinese proverb that says, women hold up half of the sky. Cesar Chavez, the Chicano farm worker and civil rights activist, said this, preservation of one's own culture does not require contempt or disrespect for other cultures. There is, there is a Plains American Indian proverb that says, give me knowledge so that I may have kindness for all. Helen Keller, the social activist who was deaf and blind, said this, the highest result of education is tolerance. Hear these words of Audre Lorde, the acclaimed African-American lesbian poet. She said, it is not our differences that divide us. It, uh, it is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. And then a saying of Muslim origin. It takes a lot of different flowers to make a bouquet. And so now, before I go, I once again ask of each of you, my classmates, 
that you take care of yourselves, that you take care of others, and that you take special care to respect and celebrate the diversity in our nation and our world. Not from the top, not from the middle, but from the bottom of my heart. Congratulations, class of 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready to present the various degrees to all candidates. Degrees will be conferred by the Chair of the Board of Regents, Patrick Shanahan. The audience is requested to remain in their seats until the conclusion of today's ceremony. Candidates for doctoral degrees will be presented by the several deans. For the School of Medicine, Associate Dean Ann Eaker. It is an honor to recommend the 235 candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. Many of these graduates have proceeded to graduate positions throughout the country. Those participating in today's ceremony will come forward with the other doctoral candidates. Dean Joel Berg, School of Dentistry. Madam President, it is my pleasure to present the candidates for Doctor of Dental Surgery. These candidates were honored previously in separate ceremonies. The present candidates will please come forward with the other doctoral candidates. D. Wayne and Ann Gittinger, Professor of Law. Anita Krug, School of Law. On behalf of the Faculty of Law, I have the honor of presenting the 180 candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor. The law graduates participating in this ceremony will come forward with the other doctoral candidates. Dean Sean Sullivan, School of Pharmacy. On behalf of the Faculty of the School of Pharmacy, it's my honor to present the 96 candidates for the degree Doctor of Pharmacy. These candidates will please come forward with the other doctoral candidates. Dean David Eaton of the Graduate School. Here with us today are candidates who have completed all requirements for their respective doctoral degrees, including my daughter, Kaylee Eaton. <laughs> On behalf of the deans, the respective colleges and the graduate faculty, I am pleased and honored to recommend these candidates for the highest degrees awarded by the university. Will all the doctoral degree candidates from all the schools and colleges please rise? It is my distinct pleasure to present you, Regent Shanahan, all the doctoral degree candidates from the schools and colleges just presented. On behalf of the Board of Regents and the faculties of the respective schools, I am pleased to confer upon these candidates their respective doctoral degrees. Congratulations. You have achieved high academic distinction, and this university salutes you. You will be presented today with a memento of this graduation exercise. Please come forward. Joseph Marino, Asian Languages and Literature. Michelle Yip, School of Nursing. 
Michael C. Skinner, Asian Languages and Literature. Nai Ching Chi, Nursing. Joshua Arnold Williams, International Studies. Omar Konash, Electrical Engineering. Indra Dine Ekamamis, International Studies. Jay Vorhagen, Pathobiology. Catherine R. Brewster, Microbiology. Okay. Nazli Demirer, PhD. Susan Christine Massey, Applied Mathematics. Pei Fung Jing, Electrical Engineering. Dun So Rim, Applied Mathematics. Jing Da Wu, Electrical Engineering and Nanotechnology. Timothy Joseph Winchester, Physics. Chang Du, Environmental and Forest Sciences. Akshay A. Kalasi, Physics. Ji He, Electrical Engineering. Michael J. Wagman, Physics. Amira Paripurna, Law. Jacqueline Corbett, Physics. Eliana, Law. Hon Leung Lee, Mathematics. Jens van der Linden, Aeronautics and Astronautics. William Casper, Mathematics. Michael Dodd, Aeronautics and Astronautics. Courtney Yumiko Paquette, Mathematics. Hey. Kaylee Lim Eaton, Musical Arts and Composition. Abe Levy, Mathematics. Daning Hu, Electrical Engineering. Emma K. Wampler, Psychology. Nava Agadasi, Electrical Engineering. Joyce P. Yang, Clinical Psychology. Kevin Huang, Electrical Engineering. Andrea Lynn Schmidt, Comparative Literature, Cinema and Media. Mohammed Hagigi Pana, Electrical Engineering. Sani Chard Undane, English. Muniaki Miyasaka, Mechanical Engineering. Oliver E. Brown, Physical Therapy. Jimma Castillo Nonog, Nurse Midwife. Shelby Lynn Bell, Physical Therapy. Mi Kyung Lee, Nursing. Kyle Brandon Mark, Physical Therapy. Dijing Chen, Nursing. Kelly Marie Donaldson, Physical Therapy. Min Hui Liu, Nursing Statistics. Shalina Danielle Martinez, Physical Therapy. Wei Chen, Civil Engineering. Leslie May Cridgington, Physical Therapy. Chin Dong, Atmospheric Sciences. Karian I. Parker, Physical Therapy. Shannon Duffy, Family Nurse Practitioner. Laura E. Credit, Physical Therapy. Laura Land, Family Nurse Practitioner. Rochelle Elizabeth Botcher, Physical Therapy. Emily Specka, Family Nurse pra Practitioner. Alexis M. Bonnie, Physical Therapy. Hilary Carol McGuire, Family Nurse Practitioner. Stephanie J. Hinkle, Physical Therapy. Micah Crisp, Family Nurse Practitioner. Caitlin E. Stewart, Physical Therapy. Sarah Hyun An, Family Nurse Practitioner. Allison Pringle, Physical Therapy. Suzanne Gish, Family Nurse Practitioner. Mary Ellen Breckel. Physical Therapy. Jillian A. Rippey, Family Nurse Practitioner. Helen Francis Daly Fralat, Physical Therapy. Miles Gander, Electrical Engineering. Megan Jane Ish Whitney, Physical Therapy. Gurab Chatterjee, Bioengineering. Megan Rose Hillman, Physical Therapy. Linda Sheree Squires, Nursing. Carly Riesman, Physical Therapy. Elita T. Williams, Nursing. Allison M. Roy, History. Marcella Manigale, Environmental and Forest Sciences. Rachel C. Tutman, Linguistics. Anna Korpak, Biostatistics. Corey A. Scott, Ordeology. Yixin Wang, Electrical Engineering. Carl J. Brody IV, Audiology. Tong Zhang, Electrical Engineering. K. Taylor Olson, Audiology. Tolulope Correre Abe, Industrial Engineering. Aaron K. Stewart, Audiology. Chun Cheng Tang, Industrial Engineering. Lindsay May Schlobaum, Audiology.
Orwipa Thamsuan, Industrial Engineering. Kelly L. Trapp, Audiology. Renuka Prubakur, Mechanical Engineering. Krista Nicole Dodson, Audiology. Jin Liu, Bioengineering. Hilary K. Perry, Hilary R. Perry, Audiology. Andrew Ye, Environmental Toxicology. Chelsea Lynn Caprine, Audiology. Megan Jane Arhart, Doctor of Nursing Practice. Diana Chagoya, Audiology. Sarah Gerlach, Adult Gero Primary Care Nurse Practitioner. Wen Wei Lo, Statistics. Roma Reyes Campanero, Adult Gero Primary Care. Rebecca A. Hoberg, Mathematics. Naomi Belena, Adult Gero Primary Care. Abdullah D. Nimer, Mathematics. Andrea Stefese Abera, Adult Gero Primary Care. Michelle Alessandra Pru, Learning Sciences and Human Development. Ebrima Vangora, uh, Psych Mental Health. Kiana Melrose Scott, Communication. Orakanya Borana Patana, Oral Biology. Juan Shu Yuan, Curriculum and Instruction. Nutta Fong Kantrong, Oral Biology. Ryan H. Ellis, Musical Arts, Choral Conducting. Sipim Wiwatana, Law. Brenda J. Moore, Musical Arts, Choral Conducting. Bo Zhao, Material Science and Engineering and Nanotechnology. Liana M. Conley Holcomb, Musical Arts, Choral Conducting. Siamak Modoresi, Civil and Environmental Engineering. Gwen Ellen Franz, Musical Arts, Strings. Alborz Gofrani, Civil and Environmental Engineering. William F. Bryant, Musical Arts, Organ. William A. Smith, Electrical Engineering. Emerald H. Leslie, Musical Arts, Voice. Charles T. Bowers, Forest Products Marketing. Susan B. Fink, Theater History and Criticism. Oliver Jan, Bioresource Science and Engineering. Jana S. Brown, Theater History and Criticism. Wendy Magana, Family Nurse Practitioner. Brian L. Enden, Philosophy. Karishpa Manandar, Family Nurse Practitioner. Matthew T. Boyd, Slavic Language and Literature. Gurvinder K. Dilan, Family Nurse Practitioner. Yan Ning Wei, Geography. Theresha Tungjin Lee, Nurse Midwife. Haven J. Onwin, Pharmacy. Annabelle Vo, Psych Mental Health. Daisy Lee, Pharmacy. Sylvia Baden, Epidemiology. Anastasia M. Bade, Pharmacy. Andrea Costa, Pathobiology. Nicholas W. Larned, Pharmacy. Pupil Gangwar, Mechanical Engineering. Matthew Allen Alamparo, Pharmacy. Samuel Patrick Wallen, Mechanical Engineering. Xiao Lan Yu, Pharmacy. Ho Shen Li, Electrical Engineering. Christian Fuang Tao Li, Pharmacy. Dun Yu Xiao, Electrical Engineering. Karian Misako Kajita, Pharmacy. Alexander Polozov, Computer Science and Engineering. Andrew Wei Yi Li, Pharmacy. Mukun Chari, Business Administration. Jonathan Fong Pham, Pharmacy. Tanya Elena Karwaki, Law. Florentina De Du Constant Constantine, French Studies. Megan Halabiski, Environmental and Forest Sciences. Huang Di Nguyen, History. Laurel Lynn James, Individual PhD in Forestry and Anthropology. Symbol Lai, History. Kiba L. Oken, Quantitative Ecology and Resource Management. Aaron C. Giffen, Art History. Christopher Schaub, Environmental Toxicology. Mary Slowinski, Learning Sciences. Hilary Hauregi, Nursing and Community Health. Mutalip Anwar, English. Julie Juyong Buck, Environmental Toxicology. Gu Jian, Anthropology. Xiam Lal Kandal, Environmental and Forest Sciences. Qi Wei Zhang, Anthropology. Wei Wei Sun, Electrical Engineering. Yu Ru Lin, 
Biochemistry. Diane M. Dobert, Oral Biology. Laura B. Eshelman, Comparative Literature. Olga Elizabeth Barajas, Juris Doctor. Yi Zhang Gu, Comparative Literature. Douglas Warren McManaway, Juris Doctor. Hai Lung Zhang, Mathematics. Andrea Lee, Juris Doctor. Kai Yu Chu, Musical Arts, Piano. Junju Yin, Mechanical Engineering. Amanda K. Harris, Musical Arts, Piano. Zhao Dong Chen, Civil Engineering. Justina Catherine Rampogren, English. Henning Liu, Bioengineering. Carlos Juan Carlos Chavez, Information Science. Sarah Evans, Learning Sciences. Cheryl Ann Day, Information Science. Tim Zing, Special Education. Julia G. Day, Ethnomusicology. Alan Yassin, Dentistry. Andre Jacques P. Elias, Ethnomusicology. Ajay Paul Singh Danoa, Dental Surgery. Sonia Liv Mickelbus, Musical Arts Strings. Jeffrey Wells, Dental Surgery. Evan Austin Smith, Musical Arts Woodwinds. Asin Nadim, Dental Surgery. Brooks Noyan Tron, Musical Arts Piano. Candidates for master's degrees will be presented by Associate Dean Mark Long of the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance and Dean Eaton of the Graduate School. Candidates for master's degree in the Evans School of Public Policy and Governance will please rise. I am honored to present these candidates to receive the respective master's degrees. Candidates, please remain standing. Candidates for the various master's degrees for all schools and colleges will please rise. On behalf of the deans of the schools and colleges and the graduate faculty, I am honored to present these candidates to receive their respective master's degrees. It is my distinct honor to present you, Regent Shanahan, all the master's degree candidates from the various schools and, col and colleges. On behalf of the Board of Regents and the graduate faculty, I'm pleased to confer upon each of you your master's degree. Congratulations. You'll be presented with a memento of this graduation exercise. Please come forward now.
candidates for bachelor's degrees in the various colleges and schools of the University of Washington will be presented by the several deans. The candidates who have been accepted by the general faculty of the university for their respective degrees are listed in the commencement program. For the College of Arts and Sciences, Dean Robert Stacy. Candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences will please rise. It is my honor to present these candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Science, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Dean Mia Tuan, College of Education. Will candidates from the College of Education please rise? Madam President, I am proud to present these candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Early Childhood and Family Studies and to recommend that they be awarded their degrees. Candidates, please be seated. Vice Dean Gregory Miller, College of Engineering. Candidates from the College of Engineering, please rise. <laughs> Madam President, I am pleased to present these candidates of the College of Engineering for the degrees of Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical and Astronautical Engineering, Bioengineering, Chemical Engineering, Civil and Environmental Engineering, Computer Engineering, Electrical Engineering, Human Center Design and Engineering, Industrial and Systems Engineering, Material Science and Engineering, one more, Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> I recommend that they be conferred their respective degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Dean Lisa Gromlich, College of the Environment. The candidates from the College of the Environment will please rise. <laughs> Madam President, it is my pleasure and honor to present these candidates of the College of the Environment for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Forest Resources, and Bachelor of Science in Aquatic and Fishery Sciences, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Dean Harry Bruce of the Information School. Would candidates from the world's leading information school please rise? It gives me great pleasure to present the candidates of the Information School for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Informatics and to recommend that they be awarded their bachelor's degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Dean James Jumbalvo, Michael G. Foster School of Business. The candidates from the Michael G. Foster School of Business will please rise. Madam President, it is with much pleasure that I present these candidates for bachelor's degrees in the Foster School of Business and recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Candidates will please be seated. Dean Azida Emami, School of Nursing. The outstanding candidates from the top-ranked School of Nursing in the nation and the world will please rise. <laughs> Madam President, 
It's my pleasure and honor to present these candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing and recommend that they be awarded their bachelor's degree. Candidates will please be seated. Associate Dean Ann Eaker, School of Medicine. Will the bachelor candidates from the School of Medicine please rise? Madam President, it is a privilege to present these bachelor candidates from the School of Medicine in the specialized fields of medical technology, prosthetics and orthotics, and physician's assistant, and to recommend they be awarded their respective bachelor's degrees. Candidates, please be seated. Dean John Schaffelberger, College of Built Environments. Will the candidates from the College of Built Environments please rise? Madam President, I have the honor to present these candidates for bachelor's degree in architecture, landscape architecture, construction management, and community and environmental planning, and to recommend that they be awarded their respective bachelor's degrees. Will the candidates please be seated? Dean Edwina Uehara, School of Social Work. Distinguished candidates from the number one school of social work in the world, please rise. <laughs> Madam President, on behalf of the social work faculty, it is my great privilege to present these candidates for their bachelor's degrees of social welfare and to recommend they be awarded their respective bachelor's degrees. Candidates, you rock, please be seated. Interim Dean Joel Kaufman, School of Public Health. The candidates from the School of Public Health will please rise. It's with my very great pleasure that I present these candidates for bachelor's degrees in the School of Public Health and recommend that they be awarded their respective degrees. Candidates, please be seated. All bachelor candidates from all schools and colleges just presented will please rise. Following Regent Shanahan's citation awarding the various bachelor's degrees, all candidates will be seated immediately and under direction of the faculty marshals will await their turn to come forward one row at a time. It is my distinct honor and privilege to present you, Regent Shanahan, all the bachelor's degree candidates from the various schools and colleges. On behalf of the Board of Regents and the faculty of the university, I am pleased to confer upon each of you your bachelor's degrees. Congratulations. You'll be presented today with a memento of this graduation exercise. Please come forward as directed by the marshals.
The University of Washington Men's Glee Club, under the direction of Jeffrey Larkin, will now lead us in the singing of Rise Up With Pride for Washington. The words to the song are printed on the inside of the back cover of the commencement pro program. The audience will please rise.
audience and members of the graduating class are requested to remain at their seats until the recessional of the faculty is concluded. Once the stage party has left the stadium, graduates may exit the field via the stairs at the west end of the stadium or to the east as you entered. Please remain at your seats until the recessional is over. The 142nd commencement exercises of the University of Washington are now closed. <laughs>